Hi, I'm David Nee, and today I'm speaking once again to Dr. Mike Posthumus. Hi everyone, hi David. Hi Mike. Um, this is the third in our series of podcasts. We've um, had sessions one and two talking about training programs and how to get the most out of your training. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, nutrition and in, in particular um, when you're actually on the go cycling the kind of on bike nutrition. Mike, on bike nutrition. You know, I've done a lot of stage events myself where, you know, I'm paranoid about not having enough to eat. Um, you know, I've got pocketfuls of goos and bars. I've got sachets to put into my water bottles. Um, you know, and then I finish, uh, I get to the end and, 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 and my pockets are still pretty full because, you know, there's a lot of um, food and, and, and on the water points that the, the race organizers put there. So, you know, what should riders be carrying and how should they be thinking about um, the amount that they should be eating kind of whilst on the go? Well, it uh, sounds like you are pretty much the exception. Um, majority out of my experience, majority of athletes do not eat and drink enough on the bike. They don't feel enough. Right. Um, and this is quite often a common mistake made in that when they eventually start hitting their energy dips and their energy lows, most of it is simply from not eating enough. Right. So biggest mistake I see athletes make is simply not eating enough and not eating early enough. So quite often people take a whole lot of food and energy gels and bars, which are all great, what you should be taking. Mm. However, they leave it too late. You should ideally start eating from the, from the gun so that you are always able to keep your fuel stores at a maximum. Right, so I mean, if you've, you know, you've got up in the morning, you're at the, in the race village, you know, you've had a big breakfast, um, you know, probably an hour, hour and a half before, you should still kind of get going pretty early. In, yes, and so this is a good point to start, the breakfast. So ideally you would want a, break, a breakfast, a good balanced breakfast, ensure you're eating enough carbohydrates in that breakfast. Oats is ge generally a good, option and a, and a popular option among athletes, try and get that breakfast down two hours before you start the race. Ideally, I know not everybody does, but I'm going to say in an ideal world, you'd probably do a short warm-up. Immediately after the warm-up, you're going to go, go stand on the start line. You would want a small top-up. A small top-up can be another um, a few sips of your energy drink, or it can be a few bites of an energy bar just to top up your, your um, blood sugar levels again. Um, and then gun goes. And then from that first hour, I would generally recommend that athletes have targets what they want to ingest each hour. We know from research that athletes can ingest anything from 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrates every hour. We always used to think 60 was the upper limit that your intestine is able to absorb within any hour. But as energy drinks have been, been better produced and as we've introduced and research has shown that introducing multiple transportable carbohydrates, so additional sugar, so not only a glucose-based maltodextrin, but adding some fructose to that drink, we are able to ingest and absorb up to 90 grams of carbohydrates every hour. So as an athlete, everybody should aim to ingest at least 60 grams of carbohydrates. That means that you need to have a bottle of energy drink plus something small to eat with it every hour. Something small might be a bar, it might be a sandwich, anything you would feel palatable. It might be an energy gel, whatever you feel like eating. That should be your goal for every hour of the race. Right. So, uh, I mean, can you um, help, you know, if, you, if I walk into a bike shop in terms of thinking about trying to buy something to go into my bottle, um, you know, there are, th th there's a plethora of different things to pick from. But, you know, one of the, um, the challenges that, that I find in, in looking at some of the, the ingredients there is some contain protein and some don't. You know, for an event like Pete to Plet, where, for instance, you're out, you're going to be out for, for five hours, do you, do you need does it really matter? Is it entirely personal preference? You know, does the science say there are any benefits to one formulation against another? So the science is neither here nor there. There is, however, some recent evidence that shows that adding a little bit of protein to your bottle 
um, during an event will assist in multi-day events. So when you are racing more than just one day, there is a benefit to adding small little bits of protein to every bottle because it will eventually assist the recovery from day to day and you would feel a lot better on the fourth day if you had started including a little bit of protein in your bottles from day one. Right, so Mike, you've, you've um, told us, you know, a, a bottle and, and something else small, um, but every couple of hours you're gonna come to a water point. Um, you know, yeah, what would your strategy be in terms of how you feel when you get to that water point? Well, it all depends, David. A water point is an opportunity to again refill, to refill your pockets, to refill your bottles. So for example, if you have finished your two bottles, you've started with two bottles, you've finished them, you're now in the third hour, that water point that you cross in that third hour will be the opportunity to again ensure that both your bottles are full actually, so that you are covered for the third and the fourth hour. Um, you are then able to, depends on what you had started with, um, with regards to the snacks, you are able to grab a quick sandwich or, or energy bar or some jelly babies, whatever might tickle your fancy at the water point. I mean, and, and, and um, I mean, in general, I've been told, you know, don't linger at the water points, get moving. You know, it's, it's, it, it's not a place where you should be thinking about trying to recover. Is that, is, is that right or? I, I would agree with that. You don't really want to be, there's no point in hanging around. You're not going to recover. The longer you stop there, the worse you're gonna feel when you start pedaling again. So try and be more efficient, know what you're going in there for, have an objective, and go in there, get what you need, and try and get back on your bike and riding as soon as possible. Recover when you get to the finish. You know, again, Mike, on, on, on some of the rides I've been on, both myself and, and people I've been riding with, you know, they, they find themselves, you know, a couple of hours in and they start to, their gut starts to feel really grim. Um, you know, what can you do to try and minimize that? Because it seems a fairly common problem. It is a common problem. And the biggest mistake people make there is that they rock up at a race specifically and they try and fuel um, with all these carbohydrates because it's recommended and needed, but their gut isn't trained. So when you are out on a training ride, you've got to train your gut to be able to absorb the carbohydrates. So you can't just always train on water. So the people that generally get the, the funny guts wouldn't be used to those loads. So they would be training on just water, just water, and then rock up at a race and try and hit the 60 grams of carbohydrates an hour. And then generally they would be starting to get that sort of race gut. So the only way around it is to train your gut and you train your gut in training sessions. Right. So during your hard training sessions, try and follow the recommendations I've given here and the recommendation or the rather the guideline um, and strategy that you are going to use when you are racing. Right, so stick to the brand of product that you exactly. intend to ride with, and get used to that. And get used to the quantity of carbohydrates while you train. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is quite a lot to yes. ingest. You know, when you start with, you know, like a banana's you know, 10 grams of carbohydrate, you kind of think that's a lot of bananas I've got to eat. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Train okay. your gut. Train your gut. So in terms of um, what you ride within your bottles, Mike, um, you know, a lot of people kind of, you know, they, they still persist in, in setting out with just water in their bottles. Um, you know, we've touched on it already, but you, what's the effect of that on their bodies and, and um, you know, what should they be doing? So water is great, however, it doesn't contribute um, to the carbohydrates they need, to these macronutrients yeah. that your body requires. So it doesn't add any fuel. It might add hydration, but it doesn't add any fuel. Right. You're gonna get exactly the same amount of hydration if you add some carbohydrates to that bottle. So that's why I didn't generally recommend having water in a bottle. There might be instances where you might need more than one bottle, an hour if it is extremely hot. Um, and my recommendation there would be simply to drink to thirst. However, if you are gonna only drink water, it becomes even harder to try and reach these, these goals of fuel an hour that we described. You mentioned how many bananas it would be sure. in an hour. If you're not getting the contribution from the energy drink, it makes it even harder to try and reach the demands of fuel we would need. Right, I mean, and, and in terms of in, I mean, are there other things you could think about putting into your bottles? I mean, some people kind of suggest that they're kind of heavy sweaters. Um, you know, 
do they need to add salt to their, their whatever they put in their bottle or do the kind of modern formulations that you're going to pick up in any regular bike shop, have they already got that covered? So yes, there are certainly some individuals that are high sodium sweaters, um, salty sweaters they're mm. called. However, most of the, the, the drinks are optimized according to the amount of sodium within the bottle. If you're going to add too much sodium, you're going to make it hypertonic and you wouldn't always necessarily want to do that. So my recommendation would be to try and look for, if you are a salty sweater, look for a drink that has a high sodium content. Most of them would have a reasonable amount of sodium added to them already. Right. Yeah, I think that's really helpful um, because yeah, clearly if, the, if, if it is hot and it, it could well be in February, then you know, everyone kind of needs to be prepared for that. Mike, thanks very much. As ever, really helpful, some great advice. Certainly I'll be um, taking that into account myself um, and hope that uh, you found that useful watching today and um, that it's going to help you have as good a time um, as possible on PE to PLET. Look forward to seeing you there as ever on the start line. Thank you.